Okay, an official welcome uh, as we get started here this morning and uh, just to welcome some people who are joining us from places afar. It's just after 8 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time and that is in Brisbane, Canberra, Melbourne and Sydney where it is the uh, 4th of June. In Adelaide, um, it's uh, just after 7.30 um, in the morning. Um, in Perth, Hong Kong, Kuala Lumpur, China, uh, it's... Uh, just after 6 a.m. Uh, Auckland, across the ditch there, we have our friends joining us, quite a few from New Zealand this morning, it's just after 10 a.m. London in the United Kingdom is indeed Wednesday, the 3rd of June, and it's just after 11 p.m., so thanks for staying up late to uh, to be with us. Across there in the United States, Los Angeles, I know we have people in Los Angeles. In fact, just looking down here, who are we getting in Los Angeles? Uh, we have uh, Ben Toppett and his team in Los Angeles this morning. Um, it is uh, Wednesday the 3rd of June, it's just after 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific uh, Daylight Time. New York, uh, across in New York, it is uh, just after 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So it's great to have people joining us from around the world. And uh, specifically, uh, I'll just mention we have Tyson Howe in Hong Kong with his team. We have Sarah Johnson again in Hull from the United Kingdom. Uh, we have uh, Eli Angel in New York, I think, with a group of people there. Lots of people over Australia, New Zealand, and uh, and so forth and so on. So look, um, a very special welcome to all of you. If this is the very first of our Top Down Web TV events that you've attended, a special warm welcome to you. Uh, we do this from time to time when I come across an idea, a concept, something that I feel would be of value to our clients, uh, both uh, domestically and internationally. Um, our, our purpose is to simply share ideas uh, to be of value, to deliver a value to our clients, wherever they may be. Our major focus, of course, is on helping companies and individuals to be more effective in the sales arena. Now, whilst we focus on training for sales managers and sales people, every now and again, I will come across, across a concept that I think is uh, useful to uh, combine with the skills that we teach. And uh, one of those is uh, involving our guest that uh, I have joining us this morning. So uh, looking back on some of the ones that we have done in recent times, uh, perhaps you did join us last month where we looked at LinkedIn and we had Nathaniel Bibby, who is a, a guru in marketing using LinkedIn. Uh, prior to that, we also had uh, uh, a session I did where I interviewed the people from Zoom US, which I think has the best uh, video conferencing system. In fact, uh, this webinar right now is being uh, used, uh, is using, uh, Zoom US uh, platform um, and uh, we, we had a session prior to that where we had uh, the people from We Are Video who uh, in fact will be showing some of their videos this morning to demonstrate uh, the system that we're going to be talking about and so it goes back we, we've been providing these on a regular basis around about once a month and this morning's session is going to be uh, a great one for you um, if you've ever been uh, questioning as I have, what is the best way to get um, leads? You know, there's one thing to get on the telephone and do prospecting, which is what we teach, but you know, uh, we look for leads that come from social media. We looked at LinkedIn just recently. Um, we hear about, <clears throat> is your website, you know, uh, providing you sort of leads? Uh, have you done good SEO work on your website? I uh, was listening to the radio a little while back and I heard this uh, young man, uh, explaining to the uh, audience that he could get you on the front page of Google search and that immediately got my attention and it, I think it must have gotten the attention of many many people because here we are now several months later and I still hear this voice in fact I can't get away from this voice no matter what radio station I'm on he seems to just pop up talking about are you getting a high rate of conversion uh, is your website working for you um, and he uh, uh, the company mentioned is a company called King Kong and our guest joining us this morning is the CEO and founder of King Kong uh, who's waiting patiently at the wings. So his name is Sabri Subri. Have I got that right, Sabri? Yeah, Sabri Subri, that's the one. That's good. Okay, this is voice activated. So every time you say something, your picture will come on the screen. So uh, would you please just give me a little bit of your background? I mean, I, I've gotten to know you very well and uh, we've been working together. You've helped me improve my website. In fact, we'll be showing the before and after of that this morning. And uh, you can explain why you make these changes and why it is going to work really well for us. And I have absolute confidence it is because I've seen the results that you're getting for your clients. So please just uh, give us a little bit of your background. Uh, how is it that King Kong was created? What is it? 
that you did beforehand. Uh, just bring bring people up to date as to what brought you to where you, you are today and what qualifies you to talk about this subject this morning. Sure, Wayne. Well, look, I, I, I've got, you know, I'm a bit of a serial entrepreneur. I've started and run run into the ground, sold and, you know, built a lot of businesses. I started my first business at the age of 22 over a summer break at university um, and built that up to quite a sizable business with 16 employees and a couple of million dollars in revenue run rate. Um, and I had an opportunity to sell that business, which I went on to do. Um, since then, I've done joint ventures with AFL football clubs, run a bunch of different startups and e-commerce plays. Um, and yeah, I guess with all those businesses, the thing that's been central is online and online marketing. And it's always been a cornerstone to the success of those businesses. Um, and that's kind of led me where, where I am today with, with King Kong. With, I guess we looked at, you know, I, I saw an opportunity in the market space to basically, you know, businesses are always looking for you know, high ROI forms of advertising where they can actually see exactly down to the dollar what kind of ROI it's generating for them. Um, and that's exactly what we specialize in doing. Where did the name King Kong come from? That, that seemed like an interesting choice of name because that certainly grabbed my attention when I heard you, your uh, advertising. Yeah, look, it certainly does get, you get a lot of attention. Um, we're, we're not, you know, a, a relative to the gorilla itself. Um, but, you know, the, basically we looked into the marketplace and seen that everybody has kind of generic and kind of boring names like the internet gurus or top marketing experts. And we just wanted to do, you know, have something that really stood out from the crowd. Um, and it also kind of, you know, doubles in, in, the, in the sense of, you know, business is a jungle and, you know, we make our clients kind of the king of their jungle. Oh, I like the concept. Sounds very good. Hey, uh, so many businesses and salespeople and sales managers have real challenges with sales and getting uh, qualified leads and generating leads. Um, after my conversations with you, I, I understand that you believe it is a change of mindset more than anything else around this. Um, and, and you've got this concept where you make this extraordinary claim that you can get something like 900% more leads in your inbox. Um, just, just explain how you would do that and why, why you can make such a claim. That's extraordinary. Yeah, sure. Well, look, as you've highlighted, you know, leads are really the lifeblood to, you know, all, all, all businesses, fresh new leads coming in, fresh new sales opportunities. And what we find is that, you know, if, if you look at, there's a concept called the buyer's pyramid. And basically what that states is that in any given market, 3% of people are, are looking to buy now. And then you have, you know, you look at the rest of the pyramid, you have a kind of another three to 7% that are certainly open to, to the concept of buying. And then the rest of the pyramid is, is basically broken down into three different groups being basically 30% each. Um, and basically with what I can do is I can bring that up and show you essentially what that pyramid looks like and, you know, run you through how, how, how you can basically get that extra lead count that, that we're talking about. Yep, so as you can see on my screen here, you can see this is what we're talking about with the, with the 3% are looking to buy now. And then, sorry, 6 to 7% are certainly open to the prospect of buying then you have 30% of people that, you know, are, are not really thinking about it, but perhaps would be is your presentation or your product was good enough. And then you have a further 30% that don't think they're interested. Um, and then there's another 30% that know they're not interested. So what we find is that if you look around in the marketplace and you see the type of marketing that is generally taking place, it's all focused towards these 3% of people that, that, that are buying now. Um, and that really limits yourself into, you know, how, how much of the market you can capture. Everyone's just screaming, oh, you know, come, come and speak to us. We've got the biggest range and the lowest prices. That's only going to really be addressing the people that are essentially looking to buy now. So the mindset that we're, the mind, you know, set that we're talking about is it, for instance, with our business and what everything that we do is based on the concept of educational based marketing. So it's all built on the premise of providing a lot of value, a lot of content up front before your, you know, your prospects even have the chance to buy from you. So usually if you, if you look at these numbers that you can see here in the buyer's pyramid, 
if you look at really how that transforms into say for instance the online environment what you can see is that this is kind of what we call the the conversion pyramid and if you look at you know most websites you look at most of their traffic that they're getting the average bounce rate for a website and a bounce rate just means the amount of people that essentially come to your website and they don't go past the first page and they just go back to the search results because they aren't finding what they're looking for. The, the average kind of bounce rate globally right now is 47% for, for websites. So you're spending all this money getting traffic through to your website, but 47% of those people just leave and, and they go back to the search results and they go, go to someone else's website. And then, so then you have, you know, a further 50% that are basically actively interested. So they're still on your website. They're still reading through your concepts and looking at your products and your services and your pricing and what have you. Um, but, you know, average conversion rates for, for websites, for people that actually come to a website and fill out your contact us form and generate into a lead is average you know it, obviously it varies from industry to industry but it's pretty much between one and three percent meaning that one to three percent of all the people that come to your website are actually going to give you their contact details and turn into a lead and that leaves you know a further 50 percent of all the people that, that just aren't converting so what we talk about is that you know those other 50 percent of people they're not ready to buy right now but they certainly are on your website for a reason. They're here, they've got a problem, they're looking to get that fixed. So the mindset that we're talking about is basically providing a lot of value through things like conversion magnets and you know lead magnets and things like that to offer value, to offer whether it's a free report or a video or a white paper or FAQs, whatever it might be, to provide content to those people that are actively interested and will be purchasing at some stage, but aren't in a, they're, you know, they're not in that point right now where they're ready to fill out your contact us form and say, look, I'm ready to buy. And that's basically when we implement those shifts for our clients, then we see that, you know, their conversion rates go from numbers as low as one, three percent, you know, up to kind of the 30 percent range, giving them that, you know, that 900 percent uptick in conversions. Your, your audio is, is muted, Wayne. I can't hear you. I, I knew that. I was just testing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for telling me. No, I, I just say that again, you say from 1% up to 30%. Yes, from 1% to 30%, because you, you, you think about the prospect, it's like, for instance, if someone was to come to your website and you, you're offering, you know, sales training and you might, there might be 1% to 3% of people that actually come to your website that are actually ready to speak to you about getting your services and employing your services. But then there's another 50% of people that have come to your website because they're interested in training their people. They feel like they're missing opportunities. They want, you know, more, more, more sales leads. And generally, most of the time, people, are just neglecting that other 50% of people rather than saying, you know, something along the lines of, you know, download this free sales report that shows you, you know, what the top 1% of sales producers um, are doing that the 99% of people aren't doing. That would certainly get a lot more people to download that. You get their contact details and it basically creates an opportunity for you to create that dialogue and to, to start a relationship with those prospects. Well, Sabri, that's what got me, I must admit, when I, I heard your ad on, on radio and uh, King Kong, well, that was easy for me to remember, kingkong.com.au, I went and visited your website. Do you mind if I just share your front page of your website with the audience here right now? If you just, yeah, go uh, ahead. If you just uh, click off of share screen there and uh, I'll, I'll take that over and I'll screen share now. Yeah, we've got uh, immediate uh, link to the radio advertising there. Did you hear it on radio? And if you did, obviously, they can get the free report that's mentioned uh, in the radio commercial. If not, they can get rid of that, of course. And under that is a really bold statement uh, of what it is that you do. We help companies grow smarter, better, faster with that symbol on it that indicates there's a video there. And just below that is get started. Well, well, let me just do that. And let me turn up the volume and share your video. It's only a short one. But 
this is, uh, well, I'll let, let the audience judge what, what sort of response that this may get. And then we'll come back when I actually ask you what kind of response you're getting. So well, let me see if I can get that video. 96% of all businesses fail within their first 10 years. Why? Is it because they lack passion, drive, or the right people? No, it's because the global economy has fundamentally changed in ways you don't yet understand. Most businesses are stuck in the dark ages, screaming offers and trying to pull the hard sale on their customers. Conventional advertising like the yellow pages, newspaper ads and mail outs are dead. Whether you're big or small, the rules of commerce have changed. After studying the effectiveness of thousands of online marketing campaigns, King Kong has identified the strategies that grow businesses smarter, better, faster. Interested in doubling your sales? Here's one way. Start small. In any given market, 3% of people are looking to buy now. Focus on these 3% of prospects in hunt mode and run a targeted Google AdWords campaign that sends them to a high converting landing page. Give away something of value for free, encouraging your visitors to sign up and receive a free report, consultation or white paper. Educate your visitors and give them more value than any of your competitors are willing to give. This will position you as the expert in your industry. Create a campaign of useful information with automated personalized follow-up messages that follows the client through their buying cycle. By giving more value than anyone else in your market for free, when it comes time to ask for the sale, the results will astonish you. Deploying strategies like these will compound week on week and will have your website running like a well-oiled sales machine. Business is a jungle and only the strongest survive. King Kong can make you king of your jungle. Speak with us today. And I did, and many people did. Um, and of course, uh, then I think there's a link is, yeah, there we go, so on the screen there. Uh, now, interesting thing, get these five free killer strategies. Now, this is what you're talking about, uh, about educational marketing, is it not? Yeah, look, it, it certainly is. Like, so basically, there's, you know, one of the best ways to, you know, increase your conversion rates, as I was mentioning to numbers that are close to, you know, 30% is by offering you know lead magnets and if you can let me just come in here and share the screen because uh -huh. there's you know people will obviously be wondering oh the, how do i create a lead magnet for my business and it's like anything you know generally there's a proven formula mm. and you know we can run you through what that proven formula is to, to basically creating these lead magnets that are going to you know essentially get people to opting into your site so for instance, a free report to our website. So there's there's obviously certain ways to structure that content and to get people enticed to actually download, you know, your, your content. And you know, you don't need to essentially take it from from me or from King Kong. You can simply look at kind of what are you know the highest paid copywriters and marketers using to sell information around the world. And so as we look at for instance, this next slide, you can see that, you know, th these are some of the best selling magazines in their respective industries. And if you just take a look and you have a look at all the different covers, you know, there should be something that kind of jumps out, you know, loud and clear to you, um, other than the fixation with, um, you know, sex moves and getting six packs chiseled abs, there should be something else that, that kind of jumps out at you. And basically, I'll, 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 if it hasn't jumped out at you already, I'll spell it out. You know, if we look at the first cover there of JLo, and you know, other than the, the dashing picture of JLo herself or, or the glamour headline, the, the next big thing that obviously jumps out at you is, you know, 587 fall outfit and ideas. And then if you read on for the rest of that cover, you know, 12 naughty sex questions you've been dying to ask. Or if you look at the next cover, you know, 17 days slim down. The next one, 60, you know, sex tips. And it goes on. If you read those covers, you'll see that it's just like there is so many numbers. Like it's just you know, 10 ways to grow muscle fast. And that is certainly the key is to basically, you know, use numbers. Numbers create a mental object for your customers and your prospects to, to wrap their head around. You know, it's much more enticing to, to read a report that says, you know, 17 days slim down instead of, you know, 
some interesting ways on how to lose weight. You know, if you, if you've got those actionable numbers on there. It really just helps people, you know, commit. They've got a mental commitment in their mind. Okay, there's five things. I'm just going to read the five things and I'm going to get essentially what I need. So with, you know, the way that we do our reports, the way that we've, you know, helped Wayne do his and the way that we do it with all of our clients is you certainly want to be looking at numbers. Um, you know, the five critical things that you must know about XYZ industry or, you know, the eight things that, you know, no one will tell you about, you know, XYZ. So it's about creating intrigue um, and also, you know, using those numbers and leading with those numbers so people can just digest it in their mind before they've even downloaded your report. Look, absolutely. And uh, those of you who are receiving my, uh, my Top Gun video tips will have noticed that uh, over the last couple of months or so, instead of um, ideas around um, like, you know, uh, uh, here are some great, great ideas on negotiating. I've, uh, one I did just recently was the six things you absolutely need to know about negotiating. One of the highest ones, we've, highest viewers we've ever had is one that I did recently, I think it was called uh, The Nine Things You Need to Know About Dealing with Adversity. Actually, I've had a number of uh, uh, organizations contact us and say, hey, could we put that on our website? Would that be okay? Hey. <laughs> Is that fine? With a link back to our website? Yeah, sure. That, that's terrific. So the point I'm making yeah. is this thing about numbers is really uh, good. I would say that the pretty much uh, the viewing of our Top Gun video tips since I've started adding numbers to it has, has leapt by maybe even up to 100%, uh, and certainly way beyond 100% with some compared to uh, what our previous numbers were. So you're absolutely bang on about the, the numbers grabbing attention there. Um, and the, the concept of delivering value in advance to clients uh, is a great idea. And I'd like to come back and ask you about that in just a moment. However, may I just screen share again and um, just, uh, here we go, that's fine. Um, take you to our, our website. Okay, now we, uh, we spent quite a lot of time, quite a lot of money uh, redesigning our website, uh, putting pretty pictures on the front there that, uh, uh, and where did I get the idea about putting pretty pictures on the front and these links on the front? I got it from looking at other websites and think, well, this is how you structure a website. You put pretty pictures on the front so you look good. It's all about image, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there's some interesting information about our programs and about Top Gun and about me. And, and there's links down the side here where people can click on and they can see other, other interesting stuff. And we've got all of the slider at the front there. That's fantastic and beautiful and of course what does it really do for us and the answer is nothing all, all it does is it's 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 like a pretty brochure uh, does it grab attention does it command um, people's attention does it ask them to do anything well what we hope is that maybe they're going to click on some of the links at the top here and have a look at some of the things that we do and I must admit until I met Sabri I I basically said look now it's kind of a brochure online and we're going to really just and we we do we give people various links and we say go and have a look at this link and the content behind the link is really good but what about people visiting our website what what do they do uh, if we're lucky they'll click on some of the links but there are so many links there like what, what do you really look at first so with Sabri's uh, input and, and help, uh, Sabri redesigned this for us recently, and I'm just going to flip over to the new look Top Gun website, and I've scrolled it down, but let me scroll it back up to the top. This is now the way it appears. So um, this is a little bit more, whoops, a little bit more grabbing. Whoops, shift that off there. I can even do, I've got a before and after um, image as well. I can, I, I can bring up on my screen if you um, want it. I, well, I'll leave it with mine just for now because I want to show the video at the bottom and it's just cute. But yeah, yeah we can do that in just a moment. Because uh, I'd like you to talk about uh, what, the, what the next step is when you're delivering value in advance. So we've got a, a pretty grabby statement there. Uh, and then here are the two reports. And you've created these images for us. The 10 things the top 1% of sales producers do differently. <clears throat> I mean, you really got to know what it is that they do differently, haven't you? Uh, the other one on the, the right-hand side, they're the six things the world's best sales managers won't tell you. And uh, there are really great reports behind those, which I have written. And if I scroll it down, obviously there's where we capture information, where they can click to download the free report and um, a whole lot of other great stuff that uh, you've written, uh, some of our clients that we work with, which is much more impressive than the other ones, some testimonials and a video here. Now, I think we're gonna have a pop out video where this is gonna pop out uh, in advance. 
um, at, at the top, a little bit like yours, so people can play it. Now, let me just play this and just uh, to show the impact of this, it's only 46 seconds, but uh, does it grab you? Does it make you think, hmm, I'd really like to get a free report here? So let, let me just click on that and maybe even go full screen. Are you an Australian looking for guaranteed improvement on your sales success? but sick of wasting money and time on one-day speakers and seminars? Well, at Top Gun Business Academy, our risk-free sales coaching program provides ongoing training and proven results with 93% of participants achieving a 30% or more increase in sales within 90 days. With me, Wayne Berry, you'll learn techniques and strategies tailored for the Australian market and how to apply them in your chosen industry with ongoing support and extraordinary results. Click now to download our industry-leading free reports for salespeople and sales managers and find out why more than half a million Australians have partnered with Top Gun Business Academy for guaranteed sales success. Okay, so um, that's, uh, that is a somewhat different approach to uh, what we had previously. Uh, if you look at that, in fact, I'll get you to bring up that, uh, that comparison uh, while, while you can continue to, just before you do, uh, I hope you like that, uh, that uh, video is produced by our friends at We Are Video, and I'll just flip over there. It is there. We Are Video. If uh, anyone would like to talk with them about uh, producing videos like that, uh, Kristen Curcio, uh, the principal of that company, has been a guest presenter on this uh, uh, Top Gun Web TV in in the past, talking about uh, the creation of those videos. And we have uh, someone standing by there this morning. If anyone would like to speak to Michael Pollard, uh, who uh, is handling things there on one three hundred. Four 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 five four six. You can find them uh, that number on their website. Any anyway, we are video .com .au. They produce great videos, and uh, if you have a look at our website, you'll see a lot of videos now populate our website, and they have all been created by We Are Video. So back over to you, Sabri, if you want to bring up um, that comparison and uh, just have a talk about what it is that we're doing there, and that concept of I think you call it results in advance. Do you not results in advance? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, I'll go into certainly go into results in advance in, in a moment. So basically what you can see up on my screen is what, what Wayne's site used to look like um, and what it does look like right now and what it's about to look like. And then you can see on, on, on the right hand side. So obviously, as Wayne kind of touched on before, left hand side, the, the headline is the ultimate sales and send prize in 2015. There's obviously, you know, the typical slider at the top, some links, some navigation to some, some other stuff. And perhaps, you know, the feature image that you can see of Top Gun with Sundays, which is the latest thing. Um, and that's generally the format of most websites. You know, we, we always say, unfortunately, you know, websites are kind of created by graphic designers, not internet marketing guys that simply know how to generate leads and to turn that traffic into actual inquiries and into revenue for your business and then you can see on you know the the landing page that we've developed the first thing is the bold headline you know close more deals make more sales guaranteed and then it goes into you know a small paragraph you know give, telling you a little bit more so double clicking kind of on on that headline and then the the, the free reports download you know your free report so it's essentially we're telling people exactly what we want them to do um, from the moment that they get to the site and so there's you know call call to actions all around then we've got you know social proof elements with the clients that we've worked with and then you scroll down you get the video again and then another you know download free report so if you looked at the statistics from you know Wayne's site we see that you know, I haven't even looked at your Google Analytics, but I can tell you right now that it would be between, you know, one and three percent of people are actually going to click onto your contact us page and, and get in contact with you. Where from developing this landing page, having these free reports, anyone that comes through to your site, whether, you know, they're a sales manager or they're a salesperson looking to, to get the skills, you know, and all, all the knowledge that you have in a free report with very, very little commitment to them. Um, you know, it's free. They just have to leave their contact details and, and they get this valuable content off you. You'll start to experience, you know, those numbers that we're talking about as high as 30% on, on those conversion rates. So, which kind of leads me into the next point that you wanted me to talk about, which is the RIA method, which is, you know, stands for results in, in advance. 
So with the, with the results in advance, you know, strategies, basically what we mean by that is that if you look out there in the marketplace, you know, as I was saying before, everybody's basically saying, you know, come and buy my stuff, come and buy my stuff, whether it's a wedding photographer, um, you know, or a plumber or a television salesperson, whatever it might be, it's always around kind of we've got the biggest range and the lowest prices, come and buy our stuff. And you just think about it if you were, you know, for instance, looking at sales training, you know, and you were, you were in the market for some sales training and everybody's saying, you know, get in contact with me, get in contact with me, I'm the best sales trainer, I've been in business for 30 years. And then there's somebody that comes out, um, like Wayne is going to do, and, and, and gives you, you know, a free report that actually, you know, shows that they can help you by actually helping you. It's a, it's a very novel concept. And to double click on that, you know, a little bit more, the first thing that we've implemented with you is, for instance, lead magnets, which is going to obviously transform the, the amount of actual leads that you get coming through to your site. But the other way is with this results in advanced method, what we're talking about is, you know, perhaps having a video series where you, you know, you address a certain problem that salespeople have and then let them implement that strategies that you're talking about. They'll go away, they'll implement it and they'll go, oh my God, this stuff actually works. Um, and to give you a kind of specific example, it might be that salespeople are, you know, find that they're always hitting people's voicemails. And, you know, whenever they're making prospecting calls, they tend to get a voicemail more often than not. You know, it might be, you know, learn this simple strategy that will double the amount of callbacks that you get on your voicemails. And it can just tell them, you know, some, some quick, you know, five bullet points of what to leave on a voicemail to get 50% of more people to actually call you back from that voicemail. And it's a video series where you're just providing that value well in advance from ever saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm Wayne Barry, I've got this great sales training program. You're actually giving them that value in advance, showing you that, the, that it's gonna work, they use it, they can see the changes. And then when it does come down to buy, you've already created so much goodwill that they actually will be buying more from you. Look, absolutely. I, I agree with you. And that's been my philosophy around uh, delivering value in advance through our Top Gun video tips that go out on a weekly basis. But I can, I can see how I can tie this much more now to um, um, something that you call creating a sales funnel, because this is what you're now starting to talk about, is it not? Creating a sales funnel where there is a certain sequence in which you continue to develop the relationship. Would you like to just share with our, our viewers the concept of sales funnel? It's a term that many people are familiar with, but until I sat down next to you and looked at how you'd structured it on, on your screen there, um, yep. I, I didn't totally understand or appreciate it. So please, just, just uh, tell us more about that. Yes, yeah, sure. So I guess that the whole sales funnel approach really, you know, came about where if you think about you know, someone seeing an ad um, and just calling up and making a purchase is quite an irrational thing to do. You know, and as we were talking about before, only usually one to three percent of the entire market are actually looking to do that. So with what the sales funnel allows you to do, it basically allows you to have a free report or a video series or whatever value it might be, whether it's free analysis, something as I was saying before, with very, very little commitment to, to the user. And it allows them to, for instance, opt in. It allows you to create that value and, you know, that goodwill in the marketplace before ever asking for a purchase. And what I mean by that, say, for instance, if you look at someone downloads one of our free reports, this is essentially what one of our sales funnel looks like. So, you know, they download the report and it waits a day. And then, you know, the next day you, you get an email with, you know, basically, that email has got some some more great strategies, some some free advice. Um, just creates it opens that opportunity to create a dialogue um, with that with that person that you wouldn't have had otherwise had. And then the next day they'll get you know another video. They'll get another uh, email with a video in it. And again, much more free content. People can literally take these concepts that we're talking about that you know don't need King Kong's help. They can just take those. If they want and, and go away, implement them into their business um, and grow their business. So it's not about getting someone into your sales funnel and just hammering them with offers and, you know, trying to sell them and hard close them and things like that. It's really about getting them in there and really providing that value well in advance, you know, from ever asking for anything in return. So 
basically what you can see from this sales funnel is that you know it's it, it's a strategical move it, you can see it goes through it's a 23 day you know follow up program that really provides them with lots of value up front and then you know offers an opportunity for you guys to obviously to get in contact with us and for us to kind of dig and dive into your business and see how you know we we can help you so you know, by, by that time when it does come time to speak with us, you've already gotten so much value. You know, you're indoctrinated to, you know, what our strategies are, what our methodologies are and how they can help you grow. Um, and, you know, it basically results in a lot more sales qualified leads coming through. Yeah, and I've been on the receiving end of, of this system since I made the, the initial inquiry with you. And despite the fact that you know I've been having conversations and talking about this, um, I you know I, I get those emails at regular intervals, and uh, yeah. it always adds values, always extra ideas, and and sometimes you'll make an offer such as uh, you you offer a a, a thirty minute consult, do you not? Yeah, so we get, you know strategy session where basically we, you know we offer the opportunity um, to to basically dive into to that person's business and have a look at their numbers, see how we can increase their conversion rates, their upticks, and basically just the amount of revenue that that their website generates. Okay, yeah. um, now. <clears throat> What what competitive advantage do you think King Kong has in the marketplace in terms of what it is that you can offer? I mean, I'm sure there are other people doing the kind of things that you're doing. Mind you, I haven't come across them. I haven't been as impressed. Uh, what, yep. what, what competitive advantage are, are you offering uh, uh, our viewers this morning, possibly, who are yep. thinking about doing something with their website and want, want more leads? Sure. Well, look, we, we're a growth focused digital marketing agency and we really specialize in driving highly qualified traffic through to our clients websites and then help, you know, whether it's a website or a landing page and then helping convert that traffic into, into leads and inquiries. Um, and look, we're kind of the only company in Australia that actually guarantees results. So I guess that's kind of, you know, our catch cry is kind of like, don't waste your time with promises when we guarantee results. So we will literally look at your business, see what we can do for you um, and see there's a good fit. And if we believe that we can, we can help you grow, we'll actually guarantee to show you results. Okay, interesting. Um, we have quite a few questions coming up and I would invite the viewers uh, to submit your questions. I do have some questions that were submitted in advance. So just let me a little look at some of the list of uh, questions we have here. Um, <laughs> uh, we've got one here from uh, Hayden Thor Thorley who uh, is of, um, uh, from Brisbane, I know, with Thoroughclean. So how would this method work on a business offering a product? I'm not quite sure, might possibly have covered that. A business covering a product. Oh, I, no, I guess we, 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 we haven't really. We haven't really covered it. I can double click on that and give, give, give Hayden a bit of details on how, how that would work. Uh, okay, did you want to just uh, talk about that uh, now for our, our wider audience? Yeah, sure. So basically the way that essentially it would work for a product as, you know, say for instance you were, you know, selling water filters or running shoes, whatever the, the, the product is, it doesn't really matter. And it generally would work probably a little bit better for, for products that have a little bit more of a high ticket price to them. But, you know, you're in the market for a water filter and you're, you're looking around and everyone's saying, oh, you know, buy this twin stage water filter, it's $300 and everyone's kind of comparing on prices and facts and spec sheets and all that kind of stuff. And, and you come out and say, look, you know, the, find out the five critical things that you must know um, about a water filter and what's in your water um, before buying a water filter. And then you give them a free report about, you know, all the different, you know, chemicals and pesticides that are in water and, what to avoid and what to look for in a water filter and you're really kind of setting the buying criteria at that stage and basically providing them a lot of value about you know what to look out for and provide that value through you know a series of emails or videos and you know when you're looking if you think about it if you're looking around for a water filter and everybody's talking about price and then there's one guy that's coming out and saying hang on let me tell you the five things that you must know before even looking at a water filter beyond price and he's providing all that value that's positioning you as the authority as the expert um, and you know that gravitates in people really resonate with that and go hang on like this guy knows everything about water filters obviously his water filters are going to be the best 
Okay, interesting. Uh, I've got a couple of other questions here. Well, actually quite a long list of questions here. Let, let me see if I can uh, spot some that possibly we haven't answered already. Um, uh, Scott Cooper from uh, Rambex uh, in Carina in Queensland says, we're a wholesaler and some of our retailers are featuring more prominently. They are on the, uh, more prominently, they are on a Google search. How do we get ahead of them? Um, have you answered that question, I wonder? How do you get ahead? No, of I, I haven't really. I can, I can, I can go into that a little bit. Thank um, you. So yeah, look, that that's a problem that you know a lot of people face, whether it's they got franchisees or whatever it might be. The whole thing is Google doesn't care about the size of your organization or anything like that. So they've got certain metrics that they look at, and it's basically based on authority of the website. So those guys that you see that are popping up, for instance, are probably working on SEO or they've got you know a bunch of links coming from websites and Google sees them as being more credible and having more authority than your website. So by implementing SEO and looking at ways to increase the authority of your website, it's something that you actively need to work at in order for you to basically come above them. So it's something that you can definitely do, but it's like anything in life, it takes you know time and energy. Okay, and obviously you, you can help with uh, help stop with that. that you, that's what you do. Yeah, yeah uh, that's certainly what we do. Okay, Hamish uh, Hamish McLean of Harrow's in Redruth in uh, Timaru. Am I pronouncing that right? In New Zealand, says, how can we generate more of the right leads in the market we're chasing, and not just the small inquiries that take a lot of time? Is there any way of uh, getting better quality leads? Do you think? There certainly is. Um, so look, what we generally say is it depends on, you know, what the nature of your business is and, and, and what, you, what you're trying to do. So in the startup st stage of a website or of a business, <clears throat> you have basically most operated business operators, they want to get as many leads as they possibly can. And they basically, you know, they want to get any lead coming in. They'll take any job because they're a start off. They're living off that kind of cash flow that's coming in. So we would say don't have any pre-qualifying questions or anything like that for, for those guys because it's all about they need to get as many leads as possible. Mm -hmm. For companies that are, you know, a bit more established, they want to pick and choose the best jobs. There's certainly ways to pre-qualify that audience, whether it's mentioning your prices up front or stipulating the kind of businesses that you work with. Like we only work with businesses that have, you know, 25 plus employees, for instance, or this is what our prices are. That will help you funnel out a lot of those kind of tie kickers or a lot of those people that perhaps aren't in a position to purchase your product or purchase your services and allows you to kind of weed, weed those out. If you're in, you know, a service-based business and you know, there's a certain type of kind of prospect your ideal kind of buyer that you're looking to do generally you know it's about establishing yourself as authority and putting out lots of great content that addresses the questions that those people might be going through at the point of purchasing and when they're looking around and doing their research they're going to you know keep on seeing your articles popping up on, on numerous things and go hang on this guy's they're, they're obviously, you know, the authority in their industry um, and that will basically attract a lot of those kind of bigger clients. Okay. I, I have a question from Jim Walker, Director of Marketing, uh, EC Fast in Sydney. He says, if you have many products and target sectors available to you, should you target based on sales potential only or focus on areas where potential is lower but competition is less? Yep, sure. Well, the way, basically, the two metrics that we look at which really underpin the success of any kind of campaign is, first of all, you know, you have to look at what is the lifetime value of, of a client. So, you know, there's different sectors that you're talking about with, you know, competition and all of that stuff. What I suggest that you look at is, you know, which is the sector that has the highest lifetime value for you and then obviously test the second metric, which is what is our cost? cost to acquire a customer or to acquire a sale. And as long as that lifetime value is greater than what the cost is to acquire that person, then that's a scalable formula. And what we would probably suggest is that you look at developing a landing page for all those different market sectors and do a little bit of testing and see 
what your cost to acquire a client is in each of those spaces and then have a look at which one is it has the highest lifetime value and whichever of those formulas works out okay you know this is you know our lifetime value minus our cost to acquire whichever has the greatest number and the greatest margin in there is where we would suggest that you focus most of your budget and most of your resources okay interesting i've got one that's just come through live from amy brockwell uh, who says, can this method be applied to all industries, for example, the diagnostic imaging industry, whereby you can't really offer a free x-ray uh, as, as radiation exposure is undesirable? Uh, there's a curly one. <laughs> Yeah, well, look, I, I certainly think that it can be applied to, to all industries and people might obviously, you know, might not want to go and get it. But the fact is that they, they probably have to if they're in the market and they're looking out for that. So, again, it's, you know, if, if everyone's offering the product that perhaps looks the same, you know, in, 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 in getting a scan, then what is a way that you can differentiate you know, and I'm sure there'd be things that you must know before going to do that. I'm sure not everyone's equal or there might be other tests and scans that you might need to do before or after. So again, it's, you know, it, it, it's about providing whatever that information is, whatever kind of that hair on fire question that your prospect has and packaging that in a way, whether it's a video or a free report that gets them to download that before they're actually in a, in a position to book in and come and get a scan. And that will basically separate you from what we call all the lameness that is taking place in most industries. Right. Okay. Did you say hair on fire question? I've not heard that. Expression. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it, it. It really is. We refer to it as a hair on fire question in our business. The hair on fire question is people need more leads. They need to grow their business. Yeah. And they've always kind of got some thorn in their side or their hairs on fire, and where where they come to us with that number one question. I like it. I like it. Uh, Graham Maskell, uh, sales manager, Gazelle Group in uh, Devonport. Uh, it says, does Google attract all ages to the uh, to internet search, or is this generation Y? That's a good. Question. No, look, it's yeah. Look, it basically, you know, we're, we're in a position right now where ninety four percent of Australians are going to Google um, when they're basically looking for a product or service. So we've got clients, you know, that that sell, you know, financial planning care for, you know, aged care. So it, it really, it's not industry biased. It, you know you know, my grandma goes online, you find that there's lots of people that are always going online. Everything that we're doing now is accustomed to getting people online, whether it's online banking or paying bills. So we do lead generation for industries that cater to, a, to an older demographic, um, which is generally, they're the ones that kind of have, you know, the highest return on investments because, you know, the, the Gen Y guys don't really spend, you know, as big as, you know, some of the older dem demographics do. Yeah, very, very true. And of course, uh, with, with our mobile devices, where we go these days, you know, even if we we're at a shopping centre or something like that, so often we, we will, I don't know about you, but I do, I, I look to see, you know, uh, where's the nearest uh, supplier that has this sort of thing. So yeah, we're very, very connected. Interesting question here from um, uh, Jason. Jason Donald, Director of Thermo Group in Leeton. Uh, and that's in Australia somewhere, I believe. New South Wales, as I recall. Uh, can SEO be done in-house or is it outsourcing the best method for SEO? So d just to explain what SEO is again for those who don't know what that term means, I know, but... <laughs> sure. So SEO is search engine optimization. It's all about making sure that your website appears higher up on Google when people are looking for the products or services that you sell. Um, and so look, to answer the question about can it be done, you know, internally, it certainly can. It just depends on what your resources are you know for a good set for a good SEO guy um, to come and work internally in your business you would not be paying them anything less than 80 grand a year and so if you look at kind of where your business is at and what kind of resources that you have to apply and whether or not it would warrant having a full-time employee um, and looking at you know what the cost trade-off is to, to basically work with an external party and outsource that Generally, with the with the outsource, you know, working with you know an outsource company, obviously we're biased because we are an outsource company that you you know you outsource it to. But you know, we've obviously got a team of guys that are constantly always keeping up to date with all the trends, and we can bounce ideas off each other and constantly learning. And generally, you'll find that by going with an agency, you can probably get it kind of at one third of what you would pay for an internal guy. 
And is SEO is something, uh, it's a process that you do on an ongoing basis. You're constantly doing SEO work. Is that the way it works? Yeah, it certainly is. Like I wish it was just like a set and forget strategy where you just flick a switch and then, you know, it pings Google and Google goes, yeah, this website is great. Um, but it's like anything, you know, if you, if you want to lose weight, you don't go to the gym once and just that's it. It's done. And, you know, you're, you're just on, on a path of getting lean. So it's like anything that requires time to create, you know, attention and you need to constantly work at it because page one of Google is the most valuable real estate in the world right now. And, you know, everyone wants to be on page one of Google. There's only 10 organic listings. So it's obviously everyone's trying to get up on page one. So it, it does require constant work to, to make sure that you get up there and not only get up there, but you stay up there. And one of the strategies, th thank you for that. And one of the strategies that you talk about in that uh, little video <clears throat> that uh, I showed before that's on your website was using Google AdWords. Um, yep. and might just talk a little bit about Google AdWords. People are familiar with that, I guess, that term. There's many alternatives to Google AdWords. For example, you sat down with me and you, you looked at what the cost of clicks for Google AdWords would be in my category versus doing it another way, which is, uh, for example, using a pre-roll video on YouTube. So you might, might just talk about some of those methods there if you'd be so kind. Yeah, sure. So basically we are, are, are not channel biased. So we don't just say, oh, like, you know, we're an SEO company, you know, that's all we do. Just get on page one of Google in the organic listings, you know, blindly to say that's the best option without having a look at it. So when I say we're not channel biased is we all, are all about getting highly qualified traffic, whatever channel that comes from, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Google, you know, SEO, organic Google, or whether it's the paid ads on Google, or whether it's YouTube, we really don't care as long as it basically provides our client with a really good return on investment. So say for instance, what we look at is, you know, in an industry, every industry is different. Some have, you know, a higher adoption rate with things like Google AdWords, and that basically results in a higher cost per click or more competition in, in SEO. So what we basically look at is you know we don't have a cookie cutter approach to the way that we work we have a look at each business individually and have a look at what are the opportunities how much does it cost to buy traffic through things like google adwords how competitive it is to get your website ranked in the organic listings of google and how much would that cost what's the opportunity like on facebook is there a good opportunity to, to do YouTube ads, for instance? So we look at all the different channels and see where is it that we can get you the best return on investment based on what your budget is, you know, what position that you're in, and then basically implement a strategy using that. So, you know, the internet is such obviously a fast changing landscape. And, you know, whether it's, you know, Google yesterday and Facebook today or whatever it might be, it's all going to be about driving highly qualified traffic through to a landing page or a website for people that are looking for your products and services. So we really have a look at your business and see what is going to be the best strategy for you. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I must admit, since I... Uh since I contacted you, you pop up everywhere. You're haunting me. You know, I go to go to go to book a movie ticket. You're there. Uh, I go to book a flight somewhere with Webjet or something. You're there. You're there everywhere. And uh, I think you said that's something extra that you're doing, which you, you can show clients how to do that with cookies. And yeah, look, it's called, It's basically called remarketing. So you can remarket, you know, across all platforms. And for the people that perhaps don't know about what remarketing is, it's basically, it's, it, for instance, someone comes to our website, you know, we drop a cookie on them and then they, you know, will basically be displayed our ads if they go to another website, whether it's, you know, the age or Sydney Morning Herald or like you went to book movie tickets and fortunately saw us and we'll basically we understand that in our market for instance people you know generally it's not a transactional sale where they just come through and and they for instance just buy it they're generally looking around at a few companies getting a few quotes and it generally is a process that takes between a week to maybe six weeks and we want to make sure that we are, you know, top of mind um, for that person as they do that process. They're getting leads from a few other people. We're following them around. We're not following them around and, and screaming to buy our products. Not at all. We're following them around and saying, you know, download this free report, get this content, get educated, basically. Yeah. And it allows us to really, you know, keep keeping that top of mind when they're in that position 
in, in that point where they're actually looking to make a purchase. And that, that's something that can be done very inexpensively. You know, remarketing is the cheapest type of paid traffic that you can do on the internet. Um, and it's something that has a very, very high ROI. Okay, and uh, we're all becoming familiar now with uh, with YouTube. When we go to look at a YouTube video on something, very often there's what they call a pre-roll video, which is an advertisement there at the beginning that we can uh, we can click through if we like, or if it grabs our attention, we can watch it. Uh, that's a fairly inexpensive way as well, and you can you can target certain demographics, can you not? Uh, with with yes, YouTube. you certainly can. So basically, the way that it works is, you know, generally you have a channel will come about, everyone will go onto that channel and then you know the, the cost of it will go up quite dramatically. So if you look at Google AdWords for instance, you know Google AdWords initially was you would basically be paying kind of 20 and 30 cents a click and then you know it, as the adoption as it became the fastest growing sales channel um, and advertising channel everyone started to, to get on board with that and then what happened is obviously the prices go up so you know every few years there's certain channels that come about that that are getting huge amount of people coming up first it was Google AdWords you know then Facebook got big, Facebook is starting to get very crowded and the next channel, you know, which is the six, second biggest search engine in, in the world is, is YouTube. And so right now the adoption rate of YouTube is, is very low for advertisers and that's because there's a bit more of a barrier to entry. You actually have to go through the trouble of producing a video and then setting up a campaign. With Google AdWords, you know, you can be set up in five minutes, you just write a quick, you know, text ad and, and away you go. So YouTube requires a little bit more dedication and because of that what we're seeing is very, very low cost per click, low cost per conversions and low cost per view. You know, you can get views on your YouTube ads mm. for, you know, as lower than kind of 10 cents a view and you for all those people out there that are kind of thinking, well, I never ever watch a YouTube ad, I just click on that skip button. The beauty about it is that you don't pay um, if somebody does that. So you only pay if someone's watched, say, 30 seconds of your ad. Yeah, and, and of course, if you grab people's attention in the first few seconds, even if they don't watch the rest of it, it's still, it's giving that exposure there. And our friends at We Are Video <coughs> are certainly experts in, uh, in producing those little, uh, little ads. I must admit, they, they sent me one yesterday that really, uh, I think is one of the most impressive um, I've seen, it really grabs attention. Uh, very well. Of course, I'm a little bit biased. It's advertising us. I guess. <laughs> uh, let, let me quickly uh, go through these questions. We're coming up to the hour now, and I normally like to keep these under an hour, but we do have some more questions. Uh, you may have answered this one already. Leah Zard of uh, Canterbury in New Zealand says, um, how do I get more customers to use our consulting services? I guess you kind of spoken a little bit about that in terms of delivering value in advance with free reports. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, Dale Senior, uh, from uh, GM Hygiene Technologies in Hastings in New Zealand. We have a lot of New Zealanders uh, as clients who join us. Uh, how, do, how do I create leads for a product that fixes problems, <laughs> fixes problems people don't realize they've actually got? Uh, they're not even searching for the problem. Yep, well that's the, that's the beauty. So say for instance, with Google, the way that Google obviously work is it's a demand engine. So if people aren't searching for it, it doesn't matter if your ads are displaying, you're never getting any, any clicks or any conversions. So that's not gonna do you much good. So what we would look at is we would, for instance, look at a channel, for instance, like Facebook where we can have a look at what your buyer persona looks like. So have a look at, you know, what books they've read, what celebrities they follow, you know, whatever it might, you know, they might've read rich dad, poor dad, or it's a business kind of thing and target people based on what your kind of prospect looks like. So it might be they live in Sydney, they're males and then the age kind of bracket of 25 to 45 years old. Um, and, and, and target them because they don't have to be searching for it. They're going to simply be displayed your ad um, based on what those demographics look like. So if you've already got existing customers, you can have a look at what their profiles look like, where they're located, what their ages are, what type of industry that they're in, and, and focus on, on targeting those prospects through Facebook. But again, it's not about going onto Facebook and looking at those demographics and just saying, here's our service, buy it. It's also about creating that lead magnet, giving them something of value that they can download and maybe highlighting what those problems are even a bit more. 
Okay, makes sense to me. Uh, here's one from Brent George. Uh, Green Tank Dunedin in New Zealand says, uh, does this type of marketing work for B2B, very specific market segment technical products, or is it just B2C, business to consumer, consumer goods and services? Again, I think you've kind of answered that. Well, look, it is a question that we get faced with quite a lot. And B2B is, is, is where we really kind of specialize. Um, you know, with the business transactions, generally the good thing about them is they're obviously a lot higher of a lifetime value of a client. It's generally a, a, a bigger ticket price. Therefore, you know, you can af afford to spend more to acquire a customer. So look, it, even if it's the most specific industries, we've got people that do, you know, rocket valve covers and for engineers and things like like that and ultimately with those guys they're not in a market like b2c where they need to pump out thousands of leads and customers you know they might be looking at getting one or two really good customers a month or even a year depending on what the value of your product is and it's it's like anything where do you think people are doing their their research you know what i mean they're certainly not looking at the yellow page anymore they're going to be doing their research online so if you can get in front of them when they're looking for for what it is that, that you're offering that of course is going to in turn generate in, in leads and sales for you. Okay, Kevin Seely, one of our uh, our old friends in uh, in South Australia, Global Group of Companies, South Australia, also operating, I think, in North America. Um, should changes to your website happen only after you've given time to see the effect of the last changes that were made, or should it be happening constantly? Well, we're all about testing and measuring. So it depends on how much traffic that you're getting your website. If you're getting a thousand visits a day, you know, that's something that you can test quite quickly, make some changes, see what that has in, in a result to your conversion rates and measuring that and seeing how it works and then making changes based on how much traffic you're getting. But it's not something that if you're getting 30 visits to your website that you want to change something one day and then, oh, you know, we didn't get as, as, as many leads, we want to change it again tomorrow. So you need to basically let it run to get some good data in there and see what those results are, are making. Um, so it all depends on how much traffic that you are getting. Okay, good. Uh, here's another one. Uh, how important is social media in the internet marketing field and which is the most effective of the various sites? Now, that, that is a question that constantly um, comes up. That, that's uh, from John Martin Brown from Mount Gambier in South Australia. Okay, sure. Well, I don't know what industry that, you, that you're in and like everything, you know, it's not a cookie cutter approach. We can't say, oh, look, LinkedIn is this the best. It's the best, you know, network for everybody. So it doesn't work like that. It all depends on what type of business that you're in and what the dynamic is. For instance, if you are a financial planner, then we would probably say, look, LinkedIn would probably be a, a, a good place for you to start. You can target, you know, certain net worth individuals based on, you know, level executives or whatever it might be and create content and establish yourself as an authority or a thought leader talk about ways to you know offset your tax or structure your trust or your company whatever it might be where is you're a catering company and your product is very visual we'll probably say look Instagram is going to be fantastic for you you can use hashtag and drive traffic so your you know wedding dress company products that are generally visual work best on on platforms like Instagram or Facebook where B2B and service-based industries generally do, they also do good on Facebook, but more so on, on LinkedIn, where you can post a good little hack and a good little tip for any of the service-based businesses out there is you can join groups on, on LinkedIn and create content and publish them into those groups that generally have hundreds, if not multiple thousands of people. Um, and then they can see the article, see the value, and then obviously as we keep preaching, download some type of lead magnet and then they're going to enter into your sales funnel. Yeah, very good. Um, there's a question here, I think it has been answered already. It was for uh, Pete Fennell or Funnel of Mirror Paints in Melbourne, uh, where he says Google AdWords have been a little return uh, the last time we tried. So we're cautious about wasting money. What tips would you have on being more successful? I think you have a co covered that one. I have one coming up here on the screen here uh, now from Christelle. Crystal, Crystal, uh, uh, Topatan says, uh, do you manage infusion soft for your lead nurturing internally or outsource it? Now, what you showed on the screen there before, that schematic that uh, was actually from infusion soft, was it not? So there's, there's a good question. That was, yeah. 
So look, we, we're, we're basically, you know, we obviously identify a certain few things as being core to what we do as a business. And obviously one of those things is sales and marketing. Um, so that's certainly something that we do manage internally. And it's something that, that we look at, you know, testing and measuring constantly. We have a look at, we set up nurturing programs, not only for us, but for our clients. And it's something that, that we look at daily and test and, and, and measure and see how many people are in the funnel, where they're getting stuck, how to move them down. Um, because yeah, to double, d double click on that a little bit more, you know, with the sales funnel that we were talking about before, you kind of have a top of sales funnel offer which is a lead magnet or a free report and then you have certain offers that are you know middle of the funnel and then the bottom of the funnel and that's something that we develop and and, and can certainly implement for, for anyone that's looking to do that well look I, I um certainly i get questions all the time from people asking you know what what database would i recommend um what email system do we use and you know right now we, we have a bit of a combination of zoho which is a cloud-based uh, crm system we also have a, a, a an email system called uh, ace of sales and we're just going to start looking at what what systems are around that could combine all that infusionsoft seems to be one that's uh, that, that offers a good solution there i think you said there was another one called hubspot was it yeah, look, we're basically, there's obviously lots of different CRMs out there from Salesforce to, to what have you, but really the next trend in, in, in marketing, which is not really being you know, adopted so widely yet in Australia and is just starting to really kind of take off in the States, is basically marketing automation. So that's certainly what you want to look for in your CRM. There's, as I was saying, there's, there's hundreds, if not thousands of CRMs out there, but you want to look at you know, a platform that not only acts as a CRM, but also helps you automate a lot of the tasks um, that you might have people doing internally. And two platforms to look out for that really is Infusionsoft or HubSpot, which are based on you, you, whatever your certain requirements may be. Okay, so if, if viewers are interested in knowing more about that, uh, it's a subject I'm considering for a future Top Gun Web TV event, possibly even July or August, because <clears throat> uh, it is an area I'm looking at right now. And again, you know, I, I look at these areas and I think, wow, gee, I, I discover someone who's an authority in that industry uh, who has something to, to offer and I often bring them on, on the program. So I am speaking to a number of people right now about those marketing automation systems and my plan is to implement and do something myself. And when I do, I will probably introduce you to uh, if there's enough interest to the, the the company that we work with or the individual that we work with who has been able to advise me because it is the next step for me it's just cumbersome what we do now we have a crm system we have our emailing system and there's an awful lot of manual work and some of these systems bring it all together in terms of making appointments and managing diaries and and, and, and sales people and the whole thing very very interesting cuts a lot of time and a lot of work so look uh, we've just come up to a little over the the one hour mark so let me thank you Sabri, for uh, being with us this morning, giving of your time here now generously, also for working with me, and we're going to continue to work on an ongoing basis as you help us to uh, to make our uh, web marketing more effective. So uh, uh, you put in many, many hours in preparation for this and also working with us, which uh, I'm very grateful for. Now, uh, you made uh, a mention of an offer before, which I'd like you, if you would be so kind, as to perhaps repeat that right now uh, to any of our viewers watching this, either live or watching the recording. And um, I, uh, I should mention that many, many, many more people actually watch the recording than actually join us live because of the, the time constraints. So if you're watching this as a recording, this offer I discussed with Sabri will apply for the next seven days from, from when you watch this. Um, so please feel free to, to contact Sabri. So uh, Sabri, what, what was your idea here? And I see you've thrown this up on the screen. Yeah, look, first of all, I obviously want to thank you for the opportunity and I hope everybody has, has gotten a great amount of you know, actionable wisdom that they can kind of take away and implement into their business that will help you grow. Um, what we would offer, like to offer all of the people listening you know, now and into the future, as I was saying, for a seven-day kind of window is a free 30-minute strategy session, which is usually $447. And basically what that will be is a strategy call where we really dive into your business, have a look at what you're doing, you know, look at your numbers and look at where are the biggest opportunities for you to grow your business um, online. Um, and that's certainly something that basically if you go to kingkong.com.au, um, 
you can go forward slash Top Gun. Um, it sh sh should be up there. If it's not up there now, it'll be up live in the next kind of 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And basically download that, that free report and also get in touch for your, for your three free 30 minute strategy session. Um, and we'll see, you know, what are the best ways for you moving forward to help you grow the amount of traffic that you're getting, grow the amount of leads that you're getting, and ultimately grow the amount of revenue that your website generates for your business. Okay, that's a great offer. And I hope that uh, our viewers will take you up on that because uh, you and I certainly have sat down, you've done that consultation with me and it was enormously uh, valuable to me. So uh, thank you to everyone for joining us for this uh, Top Gun video, uh, uh, a top end uh, TV uh, video event and uh, to our, our viewers from all around the world I guess now if you're in the United Kingdom uh, you'll be able to go to sleep now it's after midnight there uh, in the United States on the East Coast uh, I guess you'll be able to it'll be happy hour or something around that time and uh, to those up in, in Southeast Asia and across the Tasman uh, thank you for joining us this morning uh, Miranda how a little message for you I know you're traveling from uh, Shenyan uh, down to Beijing today on the bullet train, so do take care. And I believe it's very hot up there. You're telling me yesterday it's around about 28, 30 degrees. So uh, stay cool and stay safe. So thank you for joining us. Uh, and as I always say, regardless of where you are in the world, have a great day and make it a great day. It will be the day that you make it. So I will say bye for now and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sabri. Bye, guys. Thank you.